Here we are on Aikenwood, my 10,000 day hardcore world. We recently just hit it and it was a massive milestone. It was super fun on stream. Anyways, today I'm going to do a full world tour of literally everything I've built in all that time because there's quite a lot of stuff. Like how did I get 13,000 levels? How do I have fully enchanted god armor? Maybe all of my mega bases, you're curious to see those. I'm going to try to tell you the whole story of literally everything I've built throughout the entire world because it's pretty cool. I'm going to try to make this video as as chill as possible so you can just play it in the background while you're doing homework or just relaxing so you can literally have a great time. Anyways, here we are. This is the uh, spawn of the world, and I actually began right in this place, and I made a little room around it, which is kind of cool. Uh, but as you can see, it's all inside of the spawn village, as I like to call it. And that's a. It, this used to be a normal forest biome that I basically just transformed into kind of a whole village, and I put these cool like magical tiki totem poles, that's what those campfires are, around this place, and that's supposed to be what's giving it energy. Uh, then actually over here, this is one of my favorite things, this is the starter house. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of a basic house, but it's pretty cool. And uh, I began inside of here, where I also keep some of my first ever things, like my first ever pickaxe, which is perfectly enchanted, I decided to do that later on. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool little place, this is where the whole world began and it's just it, it has a lot of memories and nostalgia if you know what I mean like I began here 10,000 days ago almost three years so it's pretty cool uh, then if we actually go over this way past the spawn village we come to the Japanese town uh, where I have a whole bunch of these little Japanese houses we of course have the cherry trees and the floating lanterns that's what those shroom lights are and my favorite thing to do is to turn shaders on I absolutely love the shaders in this place it just I don't know, it looks so magical, it's really, really cool. Uh, you can see like the water and stuff, it's it's really beautiful. But it is causing some lag, so let's actually turn those off. Uh, as you can see, each of these houses, they all are in a circle and they're all fully furnished uh, on the inside. You can see that was like a storage, this is like a training room. But they're all really cool, I really like the vibe of this place. I just wanted to practice making a city when I made it, and it, it, I think I did pretty well with it. Uh, then over here we have our beacons. As you can see, I have one of every type of beacon. You may notice the netherite beacon's not here, and I will show you that in a little bit. Uh, but right over here we have a massive diamond beacon. It is 10 layers tall. It is completely solid, as you can see. I'm like, uh, I'm not cheating. It is totally solid. It's not hollow. Uh, and it has about 16,000 diamonds inside of it. And I do have plans to expand it in the future. Which, if I do, I really don't know what I'm going to do because it's kind of overlapping the path. Uh, over here we have our 10,000 days celebration. We made this on stream and honestly, I'm pretty proud of it. It's kind of just a place where we can throw snowballs, eggs, and have fireworks shoot up into the sky. Continuing past there, we have uh, over here, there are a few other things, but we're actually going to skip those for now. Uh, we have the parkour spiral, and I very recently just made a video on this. And this is probably one of my favorite builds on the world just because uh, it's very iconic for what I like to do. Uh, on top of it, you can see we actually have a glass platform and this is to prevent snow and water from freezing on top. Uh, over here we have a timer and this allows me to time myself uh, on the parkour. Now, I mean, it's not perfect, the timer, but it is pretty cool just to have a timer and know that it's somewhat accurate at least so it's it's one of those little gimmicks for the parkour spiral now if we actually come down from the side you can see over here on this mine shaft level we're gonna go inside of the mine shaft and that is because beneath it there is a massive deep dark uh, this is all man-made this was not here when I began I actually had to clear out a perimeter to make this place but the cool thing about it is right over here I keep all of my enchanted golden apples and I think I have what, one, two, three, four, five, five and a half stacks. Yeah, so five and a half stacks of apples. That's pretty cool. Cool. And now they're all put away. Anyways, uh, to continue on from our tour, we're actually going to get out of this hole. Uh, and we're going to go right over here. And there we go. We can get out. So right over here, we have our jungle temple transformation. And this was one of my most iconic builds, I'd like to say. Uh, mainly because I built it as a way to store the netherite beacon, uh, but also inside of here it's like a um, it's a villager trading hall where we have this cool little dragon 
Uh, I don't know why I made it. I just thought it looked pretty cool. And if we turn the shaders on, you can also see we got this like lava floor beneath it. Uh, this was pretty cool to make. I, I remember that. Uh, and then also we have every single villager with every single type of book. So if I ever need anything, I can literally just buy it very easily. Uh, we also have different types of villagers up above, but uh, we probably won't be going to those. Right over here, this is uh, this is how I got all of the villagers with the uh, villager breeder. And as you can see, they are all zombie villagers. So I'm gonna probably just leave that alone for now. Uh, then if we actually go outside, you can see what I was talking about, the netherite beacon. And this is 200 hours of work. Literally 200 hours I had to do to make this beacon that I'm standing on. And I promise you, I'm not cheating it. It is actually solid. Uh, I mean, I, I could just be tricking you. This is like the spot that I always mine in on, but no, it is actually solid. There's a whole video on it. Highly recommend it. It's a really cool video. I really like it. Uh, but yeah, that was my netherite beacon and I have collected one of every single type of beacon on this world. Uh, then from there, we can actually go over to the uh, hobo town, uh, as I like to call it. And I really do not know why I made it, but it is, it's a, it's a hobo town. Uh, over here we have the dome base, and this is probably one of my favorite bases because we can fly in from the top, and then you can see there are literally thousands of snow blocks. Like thousands, this took so long to place. And the cool thing about this base is that it actually used to be populated by villagers. It was like a snow globe with uh, just a full city. That was the idea. I wanted to make a full like medieval town inside of here populated by villagers. Uh, but I do think they died, so I, I'm not sure if they're here anymore. Uh, but we can actually go here and you can see that's my throne over to the left side. We can go into like my trophy room. We have like a kitchen back here. And then over here we can go up this staircase and actually uh, if we go all the way to the top, you're going to see I have a very special room. Uh, this is my bedroom. And right over here, we have Scotty for President's bedroom. And he is actually the first ever subscriber. So I gave him a room right next to mine as a little way to say thank you. And yeah, uh, ooh, wait a minute. I need to... No, 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 no. There we go. Cool. Uh, but yeah, this is the dome base. It is a pretty cool place. I actually really like it. Uh, and we're going to try to get out of here. There we go. Cool. Cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, right over here, we have the industrial district. And as you can see, this was my early area for building a whole bunch of farms. I basically wanted to cram as many automatic farms into 128 by 128 areas I could. Uh, so that way it could fit on a map. And as you can see, we have like a sea pickle farm, a wool farm. We have two concrete converters, a shulker farm. We have a mob farm, iron farm. Uh, bamboo, netherwort farm. There's literally everything here and also an ender chest. Let me pick that up. Cool. Uh, but yeah, over here, there's like a rail duper. We have a bone meal farm. We have a coarse flower farm, snow farm. Uh, I think this is a chicken farm, there's a cactus farm. There's everything. And yeah, all of these farms are connected by tubes that then lead over to a storage system where they're automatically sorted. So it's a pretty nice area. Uh, but actually, from there, what we're going to do is we're going to fly past all of this stuff, and we're going to go to this little thing. Uh, it, it looks pretty small from the surface, but I promise you it's not, because down here, we have my old map room. Uh, and as you can see, this used to be a pretty grand map room, but it caused a lot of lag, so I ended up removing it. Uh, but as you can see, this is like a mineshaft theme, this room. Uh, we have like mine carts, we have armor stands, we have like this cool little dining table, there's like a floor with lava and stuff. Uh, right over here, I had a book with my first 100 subscribers' names as a little way to immortalize them, it was a cool little thing. Uh, but what we can do is we can go through this nether portal and this is going to take us to our nether hub. So this is the nether hub here and as you can see, it is pretty unique. We have a massive 13,000 block pixel art of the pinwheel galaxy. And keep in mind, I built this before Lightmatica was a thing. Uh, so I had to literally follow this by hand. It took so long to do. Uh, but inside of here, we also have like these end rods. These are supposed to be stars that are basically simulating the universe or just like the, the sun or whatever. I don't know. Uh, but it's all inside of a massive room where we have our other portals and we can basically just go around our world. Really cool. Uh, over here, 
You can see we have these ice railways and all of this is on top of the nether ceiling. Uh, we'll go to all of it later, but we're gonna follow these ice railways to the first place, which is right over here, and that is our slime farm. Uh, and as you can see, this slime farm, it's pretty old. That storage is what we like to call a gamer storage, uh, but we won't talk about that. If we go through here, you can see uh, this is actually a massive perimeter I made in the ground. I think I did this in 1.16. Uh, you'll see why that's important in a moment, but there are, I believe, 17 individual slime chunk farms inside of here, and when this farm was fully running up to full speed, it made about 200,000 slime balls an hour, which is pretty ridiculous. It was more slime than I had any use for, uh, and the reason it I said in the past was because we updated to 1.18, all of that bedrock turned into deep slate, and now there are caves beneath it, and it doesn't work to full speed. So if I ever want to make that thing run again, I just have to basically clear all of that deep slate out. It'll take a while, but it probably will be worth it if I ever need more slime. Uh, however, the funny thing is, like, I have literally no motivation because pretty much this entire storage is full of slime. And I'll never need more. Like, most likely never need more. We'll see. We'll see. Anyways, over here we have, I think, two more farms. We have our drown farm. Uh, and then we also have a guardian farm, but we're going to go through the portal to the drown farm first. And you can see we end up over the ocean, where down below, that's the drown farm. Very old farm. Uh, and then over here, we have our guardian farm, which still works pretty well. Uh, it's, I think, like 40,000 drops an hour, which is more than enough for whatever I ever need. Uh, but maybe someday I'll upgrade. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but going back through the portal, you can see that we end up on the nether hub and that's actually the storage over there for the guardian farm uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow this very long ice railway for the boats uh, we're gonna follow this over to our mesa where we have something pretty special cool and about 900 blocks later we can just go ahead and take a left over here uh, and we're gonna continue to follow this for a little while longer there we go and this is a pretty cool portal because I actually go over here, I would like to say, almost every single episode, uh, because it's very useful. This is my deep slate farm, uh, and as you can see, I have mined this area out a ton. This is probably a thousand blocks long. I don't know, it's super long. Uh, but over here, we have a TNT tunnel bore, where basically, actually, let me go ahead and show you. I'm gonna go ahead and run it. Uh, you click this note block, and it is pretty loud, but what it's gonna do is generate a bunch of TNT and then launch it, uh, and then I can go through and collect all the items if I ever need it. Okay, so then back into the nether, what we're going to do is actually go further out, about 2,000 blocks out on each axis, and I'll see you there. 2,000 blocks later, and we actually arrive at my wither skeleton farm. Uh, and there are two farms here. There's a wither skeleton farm and there's a blaze farm, which I'm not going to show on this video because it's super small. Uh, but yeah, this is the entire wither skeleton farm. It is massive. Uh, this was a very old design. It still works pretty well, but in hindsight, I probably didn't need to slime or, you know, slab this entire area. This was, oh my gosh, hours of work. It was crazy. Uh, but it looks so cool now. I just love this place. Uh, and let's see, are there any mobs here? There are not yet, but give it a moment and a few will come. Uh, the cool thing is actually over here, we have our lower part of the storage. And uh, this is another gamer storage where we can collect all of the mob skulls. We can also collect bones and stuff. We can also collect uh, yeah, lots of bones and a little bit of coal. Uh, I always use the coal for fuel at the super smelter. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. We got a couple. Cool. But yeah, this is a cool little farm. I always love this thing for the skulls if I ever need beacons or whatever. And uh, yeah, it's it's really, really useful. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and head back to spawn and I'll see you there. Cool. So coming back over here, we have a frog light farm. And this is a very recent build. It's also super simple farm. Uh, basically, I just needed a couple frog lights and I figured why not make a pretty easy farm for it. Uh, right over here, we have the ice farm. I haven't used this in a long time, mainly because uh, they're much faster ice farms, but it's still pretty cool to see this place in the world. As you can see, we spawn in like a random snowy uh, tundra. Right over here, I actually collected a very, very rare jockey mob. It is a chicken on a, or a zombie on a chicken with full enchanted chain armor. 
Uh, and then, yeah, right over here is the ice farm. This is, I think, a design by Tango Tech. Uh, pretty cool. I've AFK'd it a few nights. Uh, and yeah, it, it produces quite a bit of ice. Now we're actually going to go back to the nether, where in the nether, uh, we're going to go to the first of our four gold farms. You heard me correct. I have four gold farms on this world. Uh, right over here, we have the uh, ring gold farm. I believe this is by Il Mango. The way you start it up is you punch a zombie pigman, and then you can just come over here, drop down onto the trap door, and then you literally just wait here, and indefinitely, uh, thousands and thousands of zombie pigmen will come in. They'll give you levels. They'll give you gold. I actually have the gold getting thrown out because I have a much faster farm and it's just not worth saving. Uh, this was, this used to be my fastest farm. I think it's a design by Shulkercraft. Uh, it's 14,000 magma blocks. It used to make something like 2,000. I'd like to say 2,000 blocks an hour. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, over here, we have a piglin farm. This was a piglin bartering farm. And as you can see, we have eight piglins. Uh, but the funny thing is I have a much better one. This is a ink farm right over there. And this is the very good piglin bartering farm. Might even be able to hear it. Uh, yep, there are 256 piglins in there. It is so much faster. I need to make a storage for it because it's really inconvenient trying to collect everything. Uh, anyways, over here, this is my first ever farm on the entire world. I like to call it Luxury Suites. Uh, I use this primarily for bones, arrows, enchanting, levels, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and as you can see, let's go on free cam real quick. Uh, this is actually a double skeleton XP farm. So as you can see, we have one spawner right there. Uh, we have some skeletons that are trying to drop through here. Uh, and they're going to follow these water streams all the way to the killing chamber. Let's see. Is he ever going to go? Please go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, this is a really cool place. Uh, as you can see, there is one other skeleton grinder right here. And I'm going to go ahead and wait till they all get to the top. And as you can see from here, they then drop down. And over here, they should be just... Let me go back. There we go. They're just one hit. So I can just punch them, get the XP really easily. And uh, back in the early days, like the early, I don't know, 30 to... 200 days. This was the place I was always at. I used this all the time just because I needed the levels very early on. You got to keep in mind this was before most of the other XP farms were even out on YouTube. Uh, this is a quick little basalt farm by Shulkercraft. You just come in here, you mine this, and I always say that it sounds like a horse galloping. I don't know. I don't know if that's just me. Uh, right over here, this is a little honey farm I made. This thing is so useful. I always need honey blocks for my big redstone builds, and it's just really nice to have a great source of honey. Uh, right up here, this is the third gold farm on the world. This was a design by Waddles, very old design, but it worked really well. I think I got up to like a thousand levels using it back in the day. Really, really cool. This was an old shulker farm storage. Oh, there is still a shulker, that's cool. Uh, but I don't think it still works. Right over here, this is my food source. Uh, this is a hoglin, hoglin, that's right, yeah. This is a hoglin food farm. It gives me a whole bunch of cooked pork chops as well as leather. And yeah, it's just a really, really good design. Finally, right over here, we have the fourth and final gold farm. This is the Glotzerfy gold farm. It is a crazy farm. Going to the overworld, we're just gonna load through here. And yeah, you can see we're on the ocean, and this is the storage for the Glotzerfy gold farm. Give it a second. <laughs> there it is. Look at how many zombie pigmen this thing makes. I mean, it is crazy. I think I have something like 20 million zombie pigmen kills on my stats. And yeah, you can see the gold. It is just ridiculous how much gold you get from this. And I believe this entire storage is full of just golden nuggets. I, I don't even know how I'm gonna craft those into blocks. That's really the hardest part. Cool, so leaving that portal, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the end portal. Uh, and as you can see, this is a unique little build on the nether ceiling. I remember making this on stream, it was really fun. Uh, but we have this like little lightning thing with these obsidian spikes. Uh, we're gonna go on free cam here, and as you can see inside of each of these areas, uh, there are actually different types of mobs. So we have like a hoglin, uh, we have, ooh, ooh, that hoglin should not be spawning in there. Uh, we have like a double strider, we have a piglin brute, uh, and then there is a pigman riding a chicken, which is actually extremely rare. Now, if we go back, you can see that there are actually 
four miniature little custom biomes here. We have like every single nether biome and then this cool little purple uh, floor there. It's a really, really nice build. But the reason I built this was actually because of what's on the other side of the nether. Uh, we have, wait for it, the end portal transformation. And this is one of my favorite builds. I, it was fully custom. I just came up with it on the fly as I built it. Uh, but I love this thing. They're like rings. We got this lightning. We have this spirally thing with all 16 different biomes around it. And of course, my favorite biome, I always say it, is the pizza biome. It is a biome. Fight me in the comments. I dare you. I dare you. Uh, but then over here, we also have like a miniature little ocean monument. And I love this thing. I, I It just looks so good. I really, really like it. Now, over here... This was all for a build where I was capturing all of the mobs. And as you can see, I have some super rare mobs like the husk, villager on a chicken. Uh, we also have an extremely rare zombie on a chicken, a zombie villager on a chicken. This one is super weird. It's upside down. Uh, we have a spider jockey. We have a skeleton horseman. We have a drowned on a chicken. We have a uh, evoker on a ravenger, vindicator on a ravenger, and then a pillager on a ravenger. Uh, so it's a really cool place where I collected all of the jockey mobs. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the end, but I have to do it in the way that's stylish. Yes, I love that. Cool. Now that we've loaded into the end, uh, you can see we start inside of this little obby box here. Uh, and then flying out, there it is. The 400,000 block pixel art of the pinwheel galaxy with my massive spaceship on top. This is my favorite build on the world. I love this place. Uh, the reason I built this galaxy was so I would never fall into the void and it's actually helped pretty well. It's kept me alive on the world. But you can literally just see the scale of this thing. It's massive, it's massive. Uh, of course, on top of it, we have a 200,000 block uh, massive custom spaceship. I really like this thing as well, uh, mainly because it's got these cool little laser beams. If you're wondering how I did this, these are just the immortal crystals that spawn when you're respawning the ender dragon, you have to do a whole bunch of craziness. Uh, but they're powering the ship, they're making these beacons shoot into the sky, or at least it's supposed to be like that. And it's a really cool build, I just, I love the style of this, it's, it's one of my favorite things. Uh, and inside of here, you can see inside of this first ring, I'm actually going to be doing a whole bunch of biomes. This whole place is supposed to be a museum of the entire world. And I'm going to put every single biome in the game. I'm going to put every single block in the game, every single item. Uh, we have like this miniature little middle place. And as you can see down there, that's the portal. Uh, and then, of course, I'm going to put every single mob in the game. And I've already done that where we have like the ghast, polar bear, guardian. This was a crazy video. Highly recommend watching it if you haven't. Uh, because getting every single mob into the end is so, so difficult. And I always say it, this was the worst mob, the bat. The bat was so incredibly difficult to get into the end. Uh, I, you just need to watch the video, it was crazy. Uh, we of course also have stuff like the creeper, the charged creeper, uh, we have the, the Halloween wither skeleton, you can only get those on Halloween, pretty cool. Uh, and then my favorite thing of the entire build is actually over here, if we go into this end gateway, it is going to take us to a custom place where I have, <gasps> oh, there it is. I thought for a second it was gone. The warden, yep. Yeah. We also have the ender dragon, and then of course the elder guardian. I collected every single mob. I wasn't kidding when I said it. It was a really cool project. Next up, we're going to go through here, and where is the portal? I think it's, no, no, it's this way, that's right. Uh, we're gonna go through this gateway. This gateway takes us to the Wither Rose Farm, and as you can see, we have a Wither up above. That's because down low, uh, let me just get down here, we have this super simple farm design with a Wither attacking a chicken. And I primarily just use this farm for black dye. It's really, really convenient, and it, uh, it just works out really well, as simple as it is. Now, we're actually gonna fly over the void all the way back to our galaxy. And there it is. And finally up, uh, we have our gravity block collection system. Uh, I primarily just use that to collect sand, gravel, anything that our farm produces. Now, we're gonna go through this, 
and then continue our tour from the end portal transformation right over here to this portal. And this is probably the most important portal in my entire world. You're gonna see why. We have the storage system, and this is what I like to call the Alexa 2.0 storage system. Uh, a, the long story behind that, but we have like a brewing station, we have a trash can, we got some levers. We of course have a cool little furnace array, and then we can drop down here, and I'm sure you heard that sound. But anyways, down here we have the main portion of the storage system where there are eight different hallways. Uh, down the first hallway over here we have our shulker box unloader, so any empty shulkers always end up over here. Uh, we also have our non-stackables, uh, we have bulk storage over here, and all of these are empty for the time being. Over here, this is like anything that didn't get sorted for whatever reason. Uh, and then the cool thing is we have four piston doors that can basically lock down the system if there's ever an emergency. So I can just open those with the note blocks. It's really, really cool. It's just a neat little design. Uh, then over here, I have diagonal storage. All of those are times two speed loaders. And uh, make fun of me, make fun of me however you want, but they're really cool. Uh, over here, we have a whole bunch of storage for just random blocks. I have every single item in the game being sorted inside of here. Uh, so basically, the idea is I can throw anything I want into the center and it will always get sorted. Uh, and it is so convenient just being able to come in here and be like, oh, I need a certain block, and then being able to get it. Now, uh, you may notice all of this is over a bunch of bedrock down there, and that is because I have cleared out this entire area. The storage system is inside of a 540 by 540 block perimeter, or I think it's about like 40 million blocks. It's ridiculous. And uh, then I'm going to do this massive nuclear themed base on top of here, where as you can see, like, we got these really cool concrete walls. We also have like, I like to call that a Dalek. We're going to put four other ones here and a massive one in the middle. It's going to be really cool once it's finished. Uh, and then of course, I have this little area off to the right over here. Uh, and this is my dead tree district. Long story behind this, but essentially every time I tell a bad joke, I have to add a bad tree to this district, and uh, I'm, yeah, I've, I've done it quite a few times, as you can see. <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy so far. Uh, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually go back into the base, and we are going to go back through the portal. Entering back through the portal, we come over here to uh, a couple important things. First of all, we have my magma cream farm here. And uh, essentially, I just need magma cream for magma blocks and, you know, potions and stuff. So I decided to build this simple little farm. And as you can see, I mean, it's very simple, but it works well, which is, I guess that's the point. Uh, then over here, this is my newest build. This is actually a secret project. I can't tell you what it is, uh, but you may have seen we started the video here. And this is my massive floating islands build so far. Uh, and as you can see, it is really quite something. We have all of these floating islands, which are literally just sitting here over the ocean. Eventually, they're going to be connected by vines and stuff. And I have a plan to make this a massive villager trading hall. Uh, but that is going to be a future video. I don't know when we'll actually get to that, but it's going to be really cool once it's done. And yeah, I think this whole project is going to be something like 350,000 blocks. It's going to be pretty massive, but I'm just loving the vibe of it. I really like the trees and just how the islands are textured and colored. I made all of these on creative first, and then I essentially just used a light Matica to build them all on survival. And it worked pretty well. Now, we're actually going to go through this portal back to the nether and wait for it to load. There we go. And next up, we're going to go over to our ocean monument on the nether. I really don't know if anyone else has ever done this. It looks really strange, but it looks pretty cool as well. Uh, and if we go through this portal, we are going to end up at the ocean base that I like to call Aquaticus. Uh, it was a cool little name we came up with, but this is my Stranger Things themed ocean monument transformation. As you can see, those spikes are what make it Stranger Things. Aside from that, uh, it's nothing else. Uh, and I love this base with the shaders. It just looks so sweet with complimentary shaders at night. All of the beacons, the lightning powering the base, giving it energy. It just is super, super cool. And uh, right over here, this is actually an ocean guardian monument farm. 
Uh, so I can AFK up here at my AFK spot. And then down below, we're actually getting a whole bunch of guardians. It's a really, really cool design. Uh, and once I turn these off, what we're going to do is go inside of the base where we can see the farm. This is my throne room for the whole place. Love the throne room. Uh, over here, we have a whole bunch of mob skulls where we... I actually got all of these uh, from thunderstorms. This was quite a bit of work. That is the guardian farm itself. It, it has like an on-off switch. Forget where it is, but I always just keep it running. Uh, over here, we got like our aquarium. We, of course, have more mob skulls. Uh, I think I have something like 800 mob heads in total. Uh, I have even more than what you're seeing here. It's quite crazy. Right down below, uh, we have our super smelter. Uh, and this produces about 20 items every second. It can cook 20 items a second really, really fast. Uh, over here, this is the input for the super smelter. Then, of course, the storage for the super smelter. This is where everything comes out. Uh, right over here, we are going to fly out of this. And then we are going to go out of the throne room. Uh, where we're going to go over to my how did we get here station. Uh, I built this, I think, around a 3000 on the world. A very old station. We have like a shulker. We have our potion dispenser. We have some dolphins. We got a, a beacon. We have our conduit. Uh, it is a pretty cool place. And this is how I got the achievement. How did we get here? And you may have actually noticed. Let me go ahead and turn my render distance up. We're going to go something like 36 chunks. Uh, the cool thing about this base is that it's right next to these islands over here. Yeah, and uh, now let's continue our tour back to the nether. So back through that portal, uh, what we can do is actually fly over here, and you're going to see we have quite a few things. Uh, let's go ahead and begin with this back portal over here. This is my obsidian farm portal. Uh, and if we go through here, you can see we end up at an end portal here where we have a couple of things. We got like a snow golem, silverfish, and this is how I get a ton of obsidian. I think it's something like 32k an hour. Next up on the nether ceiling, we of course have the mob switch. I use this every single day I play on the world. Uh, essentially what it does is you have 70 zombie villagers, which then make it so no mobs on your world can ever spawn. Uh, and it's basically peaceful mode. It makes the game super easy, uh, and it's really nice for building so you never have, like, creepers. As you can see, these are all of the zombie villagers. It is quite something. There are literally 70 in there. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. I really use this thing all the time. Then from that portal, what we can do is actually turn it on once more. Uh, but over here, we have a bunch of different portals. And what we're going to do is go through this back one. Uh, which is right over here. This will take us to our second industrial district. Okay, so first up we have, uh, that is, this is the stone farm down here. Uh, I very nearly died on this world during the galaxy video. Again, I highly recommend checking that one out. Uh, but this thing, it's like my arch nemesis. It, it super closely killed me. Uh, right up here we have our villager breeder. Uh, I use all of the villagers that output from this thing. As you can see, there are quite a few. I use all of them for the iron farm right up here, where this is a 60 villager iron farm. It is an older design. I think they're better ones now. Uh, but back in the day, this was a really good design. And as you can see, it still produces quite a bit of iron. We have, I think this whole storage, oh, almost all of it is full. Uh, and as you can see, it also gives me red dye, which is very, very useful. Uh, right over here we have a creeper farm. This is actually the same farm I used to get the extremely rare zombie villager riding a chicken. Uh, and I don't know, is there anything down here? Basically I set up a system for collecting just the jockey mobs and uh, it worked really well in the beginning. I think I've taken everything out of here but I've gotten quite a few rare mobs from it. Right over here we have our tree district where I collected every single type of wood. We have dark oak, uh, we have the crimson nylium woods, uh, we have our mangrove tree farm, we of course have the everything tree farm right here, and let me just go over here. As you can see, we can basically switch the stuff up to different systems, uh, and it can collect five different types of wood. So with, let's see, uh, yeah, and then I can like switch it to spruce if I wanted to. It's kind of cool, it's a neat little farm. But the cool thing is, with all of these farms, I collect every type of wood. Uh, and then, of course, I did make a little wheat farm down here. I needed this for 
some hay bales, but it works pretty well. It's actually a custom design, so I'm pretty proud of that. Now, continuing up top, we have our moss farm, which is powering all of these farms. Basically, this moss is converted into bone meal, which then gives energy to the farms, and I can run them all indefinitely. I just have to AFK here overnight, and I will have tens upon tens of thousands of uh, wood blocks. It's super, super good. Uh, right over here, we have our music disc farm. I think we made this into a stream one time. Uh, but I basically just wanted to collect all of the music discs. It's a very simple design. Uh, as you can see, it works quite well. I think it's something like 200 discs an hour, something like that. Pretty good. Right over here, this is my massive emerald beak. At one point, this was even the world's largest beacon, although it has since then been beaten. Uh, but as you can see, this is my favorite thing to do. I go from the top and just watch the beacon expand. It is a ginormous beacon, 515 by 515 blocks. Uh, right over here to the left, we have our shulker farm. This is a 12 module shulker farm designed by Ending Credits. Uh, it produces, I think, 13,800 shells an hour. Uh, very, very good if I ever need thousands of shulker boxes. And as you can see down below, we even have I think 10 shulkers of shulker shells. So that's almost 20,000 shulker shells. It's crazy. What we will be doing is leaving the shulker farm and we're gonna go back through this portal to the next area. So going through this portal, as you can see over here, uh, we have our raid farm district. And through here, I have what we can say the noob raid farm, the pro raid farm, and then the god raid farm, or so to speak. Uh, this is the first ever raid farm I used. This was designed by Rayworks, and it was really good back in the day. It's just, it's a little outdated now. Uh, since then, I upgraded to the Cow King raid farm, which was something like 200,000 emeralds an hour. Really, really good. And then since then, I upgraded to the Kronos V3 raid farm, uh, and this is 500,000 emeralds an hour. Now, the cool thing is I have basically indefinite materials. This is also where I used all of those shulker shells. I have something like 10 million redstone dust from this farm. Uh, this is also how I got all of my XP levels. I AFK'd here for about 300 hours, uh, and it produces almost 4 million XP an hour. So it is the best raid farm, best XP farm in the entire game as of right now. Uh, and over here, this is where I usually get my bad omen so I can run the farms. I also cleared literally 90,000 spruce leaves off of all of these trees. And I don't know, it, it looks kind of cool, but it's also kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, this is my raid farm district. Leaving the raid farm district, we're going to go over here to the ghast farm. Uh, this was a massive ghast farm, and the funny thing about it is I've never used it. Not even once in my world. Just by flying by it, I think I've gotten like several stacks of gas tiers, which is more than enough. Uh, over here we have my bedrock hole in the ground, and uh, down below I also like to mine netherrack, so that's why that whole area is cleared out. Uh, right over here, this is my old tunnel bore. As you can see, I've cleared out a pretty massive area running this tunnel bore. Uh, and it's a very simple old design, but as you can see, we are actually at uh, Y11. These are, we don't have any deep slate here because I made this, I think, back in 115 or 14. It's pretty cool, uh, old little, like, relic on the world at this point. I never use it, I just keep it here to show people from time to time. Next up, we're gonna go over here to probably one of my favorite things. And, uh, through this portal, let me just say, it is going to be satisfying. We have the Wave Machine, and uh, a few of these minecarts did get messed up at some point, but the really cool thing, let me actually, oh, I'll just break these real quick. One, two, okay. Uh, but this is where it gets really satisfying. I then run it, and look at how cool this is. This is one of my favorite builds to just look at for like hours upon hours. I could literally sit here overnight and just watch this. It is so satisfying. Uh, there are, I think, like, 1,500 minecarts on this thing, and I don't know. It's just very, very satisfying. I believe to turn it off, what we do is we just click this, and then they're all going to stop. And yeah, it's just, it's a pretty cool little build. It's kind of like a gimmicky thing to just show people on tours. 
So from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue over this way to probably one of my most important farms. Uh, through this portal, we have a sugarcane farm, but uh, not just any sugarcane farm. This is, I believe, still the world's largest sugarcane farm. I may be wrong about that, uh, but it is a sugarcane farm that produces 50,000 sugarcane per hour. I made a whole video of it, and this absolute brick is just so satisfying. You can see the redstone pulses going through there. Uh, we have like thousands upon thousands of pieces of sugarcane just raining down as you can see. It is so cool. I usually make paper out of this, uh, sometimes sugar, really depends whatever I'm needing. Uh, and then of course once it gets up to full speed you're gonna see the sugarcane begins to rain down this honey wall and it is a little bit laggy but it's still super cool to watch. Uh, over here we have like shulker box loaders, we have the full shulkers of sugarcane, they're automatically stored, uh, and then yeah, we can just pick it up, it's very, very convenient. Now exiting that portal, we're gonna go over here to the new map room, uh, and I'm actually not gonna go through here, I'm gonna just show you some shots, uh, because it is very, very laggy, there's something like 8,000 maps inside of here of my entire world, uh, and it is as satisfying as it is, it's very laggy. Uh, right over here, we have another end portal. Uh, and going through this portal, you are going to see that we have our end portal. Uh, and this is actually a gravity block duplication system here. Uh, what it does is you click this lever, and then a whole bunch of this gray concrete powder is then being pushed into the portal, but it glitches the system so that Minecraft thinks it's like still in the overworld, it's also going through the end. I don't entirely know how it works, but it gives me a ton of concrete powder, and that's what matters. Uh, now, anyways, from there what we can do, whoa, we are lagging a little bit, uh, we can go a little further out into the nether where we arrive at a pretty interesting build of mine. Uh, this is a obsidian platform on top of the uh, nether ceiling, and actually this is where I like to fight a whole bunch of withers. It's kind of one of my things where I like to fight, like, 10, 11, 12 withers at once on the nether ceiling. Uh, and we have beacons set up here to basically make that process as safe as possible. And I think right over here, don't we have one more beacon? Wait a minute, it is loading in. I They're all underneath the bedrock, which sometimes makes them a little buggy. There it is. Yeah, and it, it usually works pretty well for wither fights, just keeping me alive. Uh, right over here, we have a what's called a warden switch. Uh, this basically makes it so wardens cannot spawn in the world uh, when this thing is running. So this allows me to go ancient city raiding. I can get a bunch of god apples. Very, very, very convenient to have all of that. Back over here, we have this portal line. And you're probably wondering what this is. This is a failed teleportation system. I tried to design it myself. It did not work very well, and now it just sits on the nether ceiling indefinitely because I do not want to remove all of these portals. Uh, but if we follow all of these portals, we're going to go to probably one of my best builds on this world. Going through this portal, we are going to load onto a transformed mushroom island. This used to be a really, really massive mushroom island. Since then, I've built a whole bunch of paths. I also did some hot air balloons. I built like some houses and stuff. Uh, there's also like a little market place down here. I really like the market. We've got like some more market stands. Of course, over here, we are going to be doing like a royal district where we'll have some really expensive houses, big grand houses and such. Uh, all of this is terraformed. As you can see, that dripstone wall I had to make. Uh, the ocean is terraformed. Over here we have like a farming district. All of these are custom houses I built myself. Uh, and it just looks really, really cool, but there's so much to do. Over here you can see we have like a little different district with some blackstone roofs. Uh, and then of course we have the massive castle itself. Over here we have a lot of cool stuff like a little market stand. Uh, we have like a different area over here with a barracks. We have like a stables. Uh, some more expensive houses and then the cool thing is inside of this barracks uh, down below we have two farms we have a nether wart farm and then we also have a pretty crazy dripstone farm got to keep in mind this was before dripstone caves existed so this was really the most practical way of getting dripstones uh, but what we can do is go actually out of here and then over to the main part of the castle 
uh, we have a whole bunch of shulkers inside of here. And these are all the shulkers I'm gonna be using to design the rest of the castle. Now the really cool thing, it is the shape of a skull. This entire island is the shape of a massive skull. This took so long to terraform. I can't even comprehend. Like, I can't explain how long this took to terraform. It was crazy. Uh, but I am so proud of this build. And once it's finished, once it's a full pirate-themed city on here, it is going to be the best build I think I've ever done. I'm very, very excited for it. Yeah, and now leaving the castle island, we're going to fly all the way back to spawn where I have a few more things to show you. So by the parkour spiral build, we're actually going to go way past spawn, uh, where over here I have a couple of really old farms. First of all, this was a super rudimentary ice farm I made way back in the day. Uh, over here, this is one of my coolest projects. Essentially, what I wanted to do was make a railway that goes from spawn 100,000 blocks out to my uh, vacation home. Uh, and here are a few photos of it on screen. But it's 100,000 blocks out, so I'm not going to go all the way over there. Uh, over here, we have a pretty old trident farm. This was how I got a whole bunch of tridents from, uh, you know, the drowns. I also got, like, some storage down here for rotten flesh, nautilus shells, etc., etc. Uh, it's a really nice little design. And yeah, believe it or not, that is actually the entire tour of the whole world. Uh, that is 10,000 days of work you just watched. It is a really, really cool world. I'm very excited to see what happens going to 20, 30, 40,000 days because I fully believe I'm not going to get bored until then. And I mean, I just cannot wait to show you guys what's going to happen. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tour. This was a ton of fun to do. Uh, I can't wait till the next one. There's going to be a full 10,000 days movie coming out if you want to see the actual gameplay of how I got here. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And until then, adios, amigos.